I've been playing a lot of the Not So Berry challenge recently, and this is kind of a weird one, because Not So Berry is a legacy challenge, so kind of the whole point is to play through 10 generations of a Sims family, but this one is like all color based, so each generation is a different color theme, and I take this color theme very seriously. So when I have to build new houses for Not So Berry, it becomes kind of an ordeal, because I need them to be like very colorful. So today we are going to build the purple house for the purple, or I guess I should say plum, generation of the not so berry challenge. Look, I wrote this challenge like six years ago. I was 17 and I think I was trying to be a little bit fancy with the naming, hence why I called it the plum generation. I guess it also kind of fits like the berry theme to have it be a fruit name, but I just, plum seems so dramatic, you know? In case you're not familiar though, the whole idea of this challenge is that each generation's a different color theme and they've got like special traits and special careers and kind of a storyline that fits into that. So the purple generation has all purple traits like genius and dance machine, and also non-committal, which doesn't technically fit that theme, but it kind of works. They're also going to have the renaissance sim aspiration, so they basically have to do a lot of careers and a lot of skill building throughout their life. So to kind of give you an idea of who lives here, this sim works as a doctor, but they eventually quit their job and then become an entertainer as kind of like a midlife crisis. The storyline is like they quit their job to be a professional dancer because they have the dance machine trait, but obviously that's not a thing in the sims, so you kind of have to pretend. But also for that renaissance, on sim aspiration, you have to build like level eight of six skills or something, so you have to do a lot of skill building. So this house is gonna have a lot of things like that, just things for our various skills. Think like gym equipment and easels and computers and like musical instruments and just all kinds of things. And let me tell you, this house was probably one of the hardest of the Not So Berry builds that I've done. I think just because there's not really a lot of purple that I like in this game, especially when it comes to like exterior stuff. Like normally I would put like an orange wallpaper or something for the generation, but with purple there's not really a lot of purple wallpapers, at least ones that work for the exterior. I can think of like a handful right now, there's the purple one from Spa Day that like glows in the dark, okay probably not that one. There's kind of like a periwinkle colored siding in the base game, and the game classes one of the island living stone wallpapers as being purple, but it's just not, it's like gray. So I ended up deciding to not use purple wallpaper and just do like a big white house with purple windows, and I think that it's okay. The purple is definitely the highlight of this house, I just maybe in an ideal world would have wanted more purple. Again, I kind of go a bit overboard with these not so berry builds. This is like your chance though, to really be extreme in the color schemes you're picking. I wouldn't normally make a house that's like all purple on the outside, all purple kitchen, all purple bathrooms, like I, I wouldn't usually use only one color literally everywhere, but you kind of have a chance to be a bit silly when you're building a house like this, and honestly I I really love how the interior of this house turned out. I think it might be one of my favorite ones that I've built so far. If you want to watch the others, I can link you some speed builds down below. And if you want to watch this series or this challenge that I've been playing, I do this over on my Twitch channel. My name is just Lil Simsy on Twitch, same as here on YouTube and like literally everywhere on social media. I'll also link it down below for you. But I stream The Sims like literally every day. So if you want to come by and hang out with us, we have a lot of fun. I do need to issue a couple warnings though before uh, you see anything scary here in the build. Right now, things are normal. I'm just like building an exterior, I'm putting like cute balconies and stuff, but you're eventually gonna see in the tour of the finished house that I have a very large number of graves. Okay, like a ridiculous number of graves. It's it's honestly kind of concerning, which is why I'm telling you now. I feel as though you might need time to prepare yourselves for this. So basically in this house, I have, I think at the time of building this at least, I had like 80. Now I have 164. Um, so ba basically what happened was I, I sort of started a collection. Um, I've been playing in this family for a long time. Okay, in my defense, I've had this save for like two years in real life. We're on the 16th generation now. I played like a regular legacy and then started Not So Berry, like kind of in the middle of it in a pre-existing save. So we've been playing with this family for a long time. Obviously with that comes a lot of dead sims, just like of natural causes over the years. Again, I had like 16 generations and all of them had like one or two pets. So I've got like 20 pet graves. I didn't kill them. <laughs> they just died of old age, unfortunately. So that kind of adds to the pile. And then like all my sims had like, you know, three, four kids. A lot of them died of old age. Some of them died 
of other reasons that, um, you know, <laughs> maybe they died in the pond or whatever. And then there also came a point where I sort of just started collecting them. Like a lot of the graves that I have now aren't even my Sims. At first it was just like, you know, my Sims sister or like my Sims aunt or whoever and I would bring their grave home. But then I would be like at the bar and some elder would just die and then their grave would be there and I would usually take it home with me. And then that sort of started building the collection. And then recently, the other day, this is how I went from 80 graves to 160 graves in the span of like a week, by the way, because I know that sounds really bad. Like that sounds really concerning. But what I did was go on like a, a grave hunt. Um, Again, sounds really bad. But so I've had this save for like two years, right? Over the years, Sims die. Like, you know, all the existing original townies dead, long dead. All my neighbors dead, <laughs> long dead. And obviously I keep replacing them with new Sims and the game populates and stuff and makes new Sims. But when a whole household dies of old age, or if any Sim dies of old age, or even from like story progression and stuff, it leaves their graves at the house. You might notice this if you're ever playing the Sims and it pops up like, oh, Nancy Landgrab like fell off a mountain. <laughs> if you go to the Landgrab's house, usually Nancy's grave will either be like in the front yard by the mailbox or right inside the house in front of the front door. Well, I went on this grave hunt, you know, looking for graves to add to my collection. And there were a lot of them. I checked all of Willow Creek, Willow Creek, <laughs> Willow Creek, Oasis Springs, and I think like maybe the Vampire's World. So not even that many houses. I checked like, you know, three worlds worth. And I found like 80 graves because some of the houses would have literally eight just there in the front yard. I'm not even exaggerating, but it would happen because all these Sims would have a bunch of kids autonomously and then they would all die of old age eventually. And then they just be there. So I would go to the house and just bring the graves home with me and then put them in my front yard. So eventually you'll see at the end, um, the entire front yard is full of graves. So we started off with just like some cute landscaping and stuff. It, it almost looks like a picket fence in the front, but instead it's it's gravestones. And what I'm trying to do is fill in the entire lot with them. Like my goal is to have them like in the entire front yard. <laughs> People keep coming in and being like, you know, you can build a graveyard. And then I'll be like, actually the yard is the graveyard, thank you. I want the entire yard to be graves. No grass, just graves. But yeah, with that out of the way, um, I don't think there's anything else extremely concerning that you need to be worried about that you'll see in this video, aside from just like the purple, but that's not too bad. Purple house and uh, graveyard are different levels of concerning. Honestly though, I think I might make an entire YouTube video on the grave hunt thing, like a grave tour. Could you imagine? <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to my grave tour. And I just show you like all of my graves and how I got them. Seriously considering posting a video like that soon. Uh, let me know if I should. We could probably go on a grave hunt and like get all the rest of them you know, cause I haven't checked all the worlds yet. There's definitely more. If any of you have any like long standing saves that you've played in for a long time, I encourage you to do this. I think you'll find it fun. You also find graves for like Sims that you maybe care about a little bit. Like obviously a lot of them were Sims that I had never met or seen before, but on occasion I'd be like, oh my God, that's my Sims cousin. I forgot about them. And then I, you know, brought it home. So that's kind of nice, I guess. Anyway, we're actually furnishing the house now. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the layout here. The room that we're doing right now is the office. I'm Obviously any legacy challenge house or even like any Sims house, let's be real. If it's big enough, it's worth having a skill room of some sort. Cause then you can put in like the computer, the chess table, like all of that stuff. I also use this room for like some of the cat things. My Sim had a cat and I wanted them to have like a cat tree and you know, some of that stuff that doesn't really always fit anywhere else. It's just like the catch all room. And this rug is pretty interesting. I got a lot of questions about this when I was building the house on stream. The rug isn't actually a rug, like one big rug. It's actually three of the seasons rugs. Rugs. There's like a, a runner from Seasons and I totally didn't realize that it had that swatch, but it does have a nice purple swatch. And so I used it and I just like tiled three of them together. I've started doing that more often, like trying to use rugs in different ways because I'm getting a little bit desperate because I feel like we don't have that many rugs in the game and I've used like every single one of them 10 times. But I, I totally didn't know that that Seasons rug had a purple swatch and I don't really use runners that much, but when you stack it together, it looks pretty good, especially because the pattern is sort of tiling any Anyway, so it kind of works when you put it together. And that's also nice because when you stack them like that, you can kind of get a sort of custom size.
size, you can make it fit like whatever space you need it to. This room we're doing now upstairs is like the primary bedroom. And I was really happy with the layout of this. I'll tell you right now, I had to cut out like some of the building of the floor plan and stuff because this video was so long. It would have been like an hour long speed build. And um, there's only so much talking to myself that I can do. I can talk. I can talk to myself for a long time. I think an hour is maybe too much. If you wanted to watch the like full thing though, I did post these live streams. I streamed building this house twice. And so there's like probably six hours or so worth of content of me building this house live. I can link those videos down below. Don't feel like you have to watch them. But if you wanted to go back and watch the live streams, I post all of my past live streams on my channel called More Simsy. There is like thousands of hours of, of backlogged content on there if you're interested. But anyway, I was happy with that bedroom really because I liked the fancy paneling I had done and I had like a walk-in closet and an ensuite bathroom. It was kind of nice. There's a couple other slightly weird things going on in the other bedrooms of this house though. Because it's like a generational legacy thing that I've been doing, I usually live with like the whole family. Right now I've got eight Sims because I have my current generation, the purple Sim, her parents, <laughs> all of her kids. There's a cat and a dog. Like we have so many Sims in the household. And this is kind of where the houses get a little bit more colorful. Although this is kind of a bad example because the generation before the purple generation is gray. <laughs> so this room is like my Sims parents room, the grandparents room. They've got like an ensuite bathroom and a private balcony and stuff. And I've got like it all sort of decorated for that Sims personality. The gray generation was an athlete. They were also super into singing and they had the slob trait. So I decorated it to kind of fit that. I've got like some clutter on just one side of the room because just one of them is a slob. So they have like the mess on just half of the bed. Although at the time I'm recording this, one of the Sims that lived in this room, one of the parents is dead. The other Sim, the actual gray generation Sim is still alive because part of that generation is to do the like bodybuilder aspiration. And I don't know how many of you have finished that aspiration in the Sims for, but if your Sim does the bodybuilder aspiration and they complete it, they get this special bonus trait called long lived. This trait is ridiculous. My Sim is never gonna die. I'm like not even kidding. He got 30 bonus days. So he's an elder, like his, his bar is glowing or whatever, like he's supposed to die, but he's got 30 bonus days. When I check on MC Command Center, it says like 29 days remaining. Oh my God. <laughs> That's like an entire second adulthood. Like he's literally never gonna die. He's gonna make it until like his grandkids have kids. Like he's gonna be around forever. So this is his room. I tried to make sure he had a bunch of nice stuff cause he's gonna be here for a while. And then the other bedrooms, like the kids bedrooms are for the orange generation. So purple's kids are orange. Again, this challenge is kind of weird. It's not like rainbow order. It's more like storyline order <laughs> almost. So I decorated all of the kids bedrooms in like sort of an orange color scheme. I guess I say that as I'm about to decorate a purple bedroom. But when I was building this house, I had a lot of weird stuff going on. I had like some sort of incidents with accident babies and stuff. I don't even want to get into it. I guess I probably should. You know how we got that like story progression update? The one with like the neighborhood story stuff? So usually in legacy challenges, I play like very generational. I live with like everybody in the house all at once. But for this one, because the purple sim, one of their rules is to live in three different worlds. They started out at Mount Komorebi where they were born, lived there for a while. Then I had them move out out to Sulani for a bit and live in a micro home to work on building skills to like help with the challenge. And then obviously I came back here <laughs> to this big house with the rest of the family again. Well, I was gone from the family home for like maybe four days in game. I really didn't live in the micro home for very long. I just wanted to like do some skill building, get that like requirement from the challenge out of the way and then come back to the big house again. And in the four days that I was gone, I decided to leave the neighborhood stories thing on on purpose. I even like joked about it on stream. I was like, haha, I'm gonna leave on neighborhood stories. What if somebody dies or like has a baby? I'm not kidding. They had two more kids. They had had four kids already. And while I was gone, they had two more. So they gave birth to one and I was like, haha, that's funny. Like you have a baby. Oh my God, I've got another kid, but haha, that's funny. And then I get back and I realize they were pregnant again. So they had a baby and another pregnancy. How unlucky is that? It was like four days. I was gone for four days and you, you really took advantage of those four days. I know it was my fault for leaving it on, but like, I thought it would be funny if like one silly thing happened, but two, two of them. That's why I've got a purple bedroom because <laughs> technically those bonus babies, the accident babies, are like the purple generation. Um, so I had like one purple room for them. And then downstairs, I've got like an orange bedroom for the future kids. It's just a mess. This family's a mess. And then to make matters worse, all of the other kids are like grown up and gone now, the other purple Sims. Again, I realize that how I'm describing this is like so bizarre, but you know how you play like Sims legacies. Usually I pick like one Sim to keep playing with and then move out their siblings. I moved out all their other siblings. There's so many of them, but they're all moved out. At this point, three of them, 
have gotten killed by story progression, and I am not exaggerating. Three of the other siblings, half of them, have died from story progression. One of them, I got a pop-up that was like, oh, they laughed too hard at a dad joke and died. And then the other two fell off a mountain in Mount Komorebi. Two of them had the pop-up like, oh, so-and-so died from falling off a mountain. What? <laughs> <laughs> you killed half my sims! The game is just, I mean, I guess it gave us two and it, it took three away apparently. Um, but yeah, this has been kind of a wild family. It's actually been maybe a good thing because I have like all this grave collection and stuff. Uh, but come on, you're gonna kill half my Sims siblings, really? I've never gotten that unlucky from the Neighborhood Stories stuff. I've definitely had Sims die from Neighborhood Stories before, but I feel like most of the time it's like other Sims. It's like Nancy Landgrab and stuff. I don't usually have my own Sims die from it. And I do leave the setting on because I hate to say it, but I think it's kind of funny. Like it, it is kind of silly when my Sims die from it. It, but like, I didn't- I didn't expect half of them. Well anyway, we're kind of working on the finishing touches of the house now. At this point of like any legacy build that I do, it always gets kind of weird because I start off with like so much money, right? And I like feel super confident, we can do anything, and then I start furnishing and realizing like, oh, <laughs> I only have 3,000 civilians left, okay. And then it sort of like winds down a little bit as I realize like, oh, I don't actually have that much money, even though I started out with like 120,000. But anytime I build a house that I'm like actually playing in. It's always like a work in progress kind of thing. I don't know how many of you play like this, but normally I'll like build the big house, finish most of it, but then also know like, oh, when I get some more money, I'll want to like add to the back porch, or I'd like to buy a pool once I can afford it. Or you're like constantly upgrading appliances and the computers and stuff as you're getting more money. And then obviously I'm changing out bedrooms and stuff as like sims are dying and things, so this is constantly changing. Even watching this back, it's funny because in my current game so much has changed. Since I recorded I've like added an addition on because I needed an extra bedroom for one of my kids because I had an accident baby again. That was a risky woohoo accident baby though, not like a story progression accident baby. I've also put like a cupcake machine and a ton of kids stuff like the toddler slide and that tent from Dream Home Decorator, all those things on the patio. So a lot is different. A lot is different. My sim now has four kids. At the time of recording this, she had zero. I made this like little orange room, but I, I didn't even need it because I, I didn't have any sims that needed to live there. She hadn't had any kids yet, but now we have a bunch. Honestly, Honestly, decorating this orange room was like a real wake-up call for me. It made me feel very afraid of what to expect when I build the orange house. Because I like purple. Building an all-purple house is fine. I think it's really cute, like the, the living room's nice, I like the rug colors, it's very pastel and cutesy. But when I have to make an entirely orange home, I don't really like orange. Like I, I don't really enjoy the color orange that much, so I'm kind of dreading that one. <laughs> I'm not really looking forward to having to build an entirely orange home. Actually, to make matters worse, one of the rules for the orange generation is to live in a needs TLC apartment for your entire young adult life. The needs TLC apartments are those ones that are like kind of bad from city living and you can't remove the trait, it's stuck there. And in those apartments, you have like leaky pipes and roaches and like rats <laughs> and there's gas leaks and like just all kinds of bad things happen all the time. And I have to live there for like years in game. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, whoever wrote this not so berry challenge, that Lil Simsy person, yikes. <laughs> she must be stopped. If only I had known, you know, back when I was 17, that I was just gonna dread this and regret it so much when I got older. I didn't think about like the pain I would be causing my 23 year old self. But anyway, the house is pretty much done now. I'm kind of just finishing up some last things, putting it on the gallery. And so with that, I think now we should pop back into the game and I'll give you like a real tour of it. In fact, I think I'll show you a tour of what I just built and put on the gallery and also what I've got now and like what I'm actually playing in so you can see how different it is. Not that I like changed it on purpose, but I've just been playing in it for a couple weeks now so things are different. I feel like I always talk a lot about nothing in these videos, but today was like exceptionally chaotic. I was just talking and talking and talking, but the actual house is built in Copperdale. I made it on this lot where the Prescotts live. Obviously in my game they're long dead, so I don't need to worry about them. On the gallery it's called the Plum Not So Berry House. Oh my god, I built it a month ago. Oh, I'm very late to posting this on YouTube. I'm recording this on the 28th of February and I posted this on January 30th. Okay, well, it's like 112,000 simoleons. It obviously uses like a million packs. Oh my god. Okay, I don't normally try to limit packs in the builds that I do for my own gameplay, but wow, that is exceptionally bad. And here's what the finished product looks like. I am so happy with like the entrance and how grand it feels and like these pretty windows and the 
landscaping. I kind of forgot about this, but this is my shark pond. <laughs> um, around the back, we have like a little side door off the kitchen. In the backyard, we got like a pretty path, some swings. We have a huge back patio that has just like a grill and a table and stuff. And then when you actually come inside, there's sort of like a big open floor plan here in the main living space. We've got this kitchen back here that I tried to put some pretty purple stuff in. We have like the pretty purple tile and these nice little chairs. Back here is the dining room, which I am obsessed with. I love these little paintings. These are from the werewolf pack, believe it or not. And they have so many nice swatches. Like look at those. They look so good right there, I think. Then we have a little bathroom downstairs. Uh, over here we have the big living room. And I really liked this idea. I sort of like hid tables underneath these cabinets. So it looks like there's legs on them. It does look kind of weird when the walls are cut away, I will say, and I play with walls cut away most of the time. So <laughs> it usually just looks like these tables are there, but I like it when the walls are up. Uh, over here, we have that little office I was talking about with the rugs that I had tiled. This is that little orange bedroom with the toddler stuff in it. Upstairs, we've got a tiny little hallway. We have the gray bedroom and they have their own balcony. I tried to include a lot of things to make this seem like a separate space for the grandparents. They have a little gray bathroom too. Because one of the Sims that lives here is a slob. I made like their half of the room a little bit messier. And then they also have like some mess in the bathroom too with like the clutter and everything. This is that little purple room for the accident babies, but they don't live here anymore. So I'm not worried about them. We've got this little bathroom right here. This is the primary bedroom. I really like this paneling that I did. And they also have like a walk-in closet and an ensuite bathroom, but that's pretty much the whole house, at least as I had initially built it. But I want to like go back into my save and show you what it looks like now that I've been playing in it for a month because some things have changed. I just want to warn you again. I have a lot of graves, okay? I tried to tell you, but it, it is jarring when you first see it. So, um, this is my not so buried house. Um, over here are all of the graves from like the original collection. And these are all the ones that I found at once during the grave hunt. Uh, this is my shark pond. <laughs> you can see I have like some school projects out and stuff. In the back I've added, let's see. Oh my God, a lot of things. I need more space. I need a bigger lot. But in the back I've got a telescope. We still have the swing set, but I've also put this statue that I have from my astronaut career. I've got some like fabrication stuff for my sim. I also have this wormhole generator because then I can go to space. I got some more money so we put in like this little outdoor kitchen space. I have a cupcake machine now, yoga mats, stuff like that. When you come inside, I think most of these things are pretty much the same except I've probably added a few things like this live blue slug. Uh, over here, this toilet catches on fire so I have that now. There's like some family photos and stuff too. This is the new version of that orange bedroom because the kids are a little bit older so they've got like some bunk beds because they have to share some space in here. Back this way, I think the office is probably identical I just have some more stuff. Like I've got all my collection items in here now. So like I have these from finishing collections. I have some trophies. I've got all my simmies, some little things that I've knitted and stuff. And then when you come upstairs, a lot has changed up here too, mostly over in this corner because I had to add an extra bedroom. This was actually a bathroom in the build that I just showed you, but I had to like steal some space from here and I actually bumped it out on the outside. It looks really weird from the outside, but I don't really care because I just needed more space. <laughs> I had too many kids. So one of the kids lives here. We've got this room now, I am obsessed with the ghost wallpaper because like when else can you use that if not in an entirely orange themed room? But I think the rest of this is the same. Although I had to switch the closet into a bathroom because I got rid of this bathroom. But you know, it happens. This is what you get when you've got like six kids. <laughs> oh, and they're all very sad because my cat just died. So we've come at a rough time. This is my purple Sim Raisin. That's her husband, Bran. Uh, that's her dad, Grave. <laughs> His husband's dead. And these are my kids. Their names are Blaze, Garfield, cheddar and yam. Um, I don't really, I don't know, Twitch chat. <laughs> it's just, yeah. So on that note, I'm probably going to end this video right here. I hope that you enjoyed it. I think it's kind of fun for me to just talk about like the Sims that I've been playing. And it's always fun to do builds like this and show you around a little bit. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might like my Twitch channel. Again, my name's just Lil Simsy there and I'll have it linked down below. So feel free to drop a follow. And also I post a ton of Sims content here on YouTube as well, obviously. So feel free to subscribe and I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everybody. Oh my God, I'm looking at myself right now in the camera and my hair is a disaster. I don't know how much you can tell when you can't see the back of my head, but I cut it myself and it's bad.